In this lesson, we're going to combine our knowledge of functions with a new topic. This is called objects. Objects are the basis of every Python program that you will ever write. When programming in Python, we do things by calling functions. I mean functions that add to numbers or functions that import data. You see, pretty much everything in Python is an object. Remember those two modules that we talked about in previous lesson? Modules like pandas, math, or our own life module. Those are objects. More formally, all the data in Python take a form of object. And the goal of this lesson is to explain the code that we wrote in previous lessons in more detail. By the end of this lesson, I want you guys to have a deeper understanding on how life.theanswer and math.py actually works. My goal is to make these lines of code make a lot more sense. Let's make a real life analogy to objects in Python. Suppose you have a car and we're going to talk about your car like a Python object. First, your car needs to have a name. We are actually going to call your car a Rolls Royce, all lowercase and with an underscore to keep the Python naming conventions. Now, if you have to describe your car to your friends, you might talk about your car color, the number of seats it has and the power of the engine, or how much petrol you have left in the tank. All of these things are attributes of your car. Now, there is something quite significant about this. Namely, these attributes capture information about the state of your car. And your car state can change. For example, as you are driving along, the amount of fuel in the tank will decrease. In the same way, if you've got a computer game, the state of the game will also change. Most obviously, the level that the player is on will change as the game program runs. But coming back to these attributes, let's talk about this attribute in a bit more detail and look at the Python syntax. The thing is, much of the Python programming boils down to this simple pattern, objects.attributes. So if you are writing a piece of Python code, and then assessing the attributes of your car, then you might write something like rosroyce.color or rosroyce.enginePower. The point is that we also use the same object.attribute pattern when we were talking about our own Python modules. With life.theanswer and math.py, in all of these cases, we were able to access information from inside our object using the dot notation. Now, accessing information from object through their attribute is very well and good. But remember, this is where our functions comes in because we are going to use a different word to refer to functions in this context. Functions that are used with an object are called methods. And oftentimes you will hear the word function or method used interchangeably. So it is still a good idea to get familiar with all of these vocabularies because you will definitely come across these words online. And also nobody enjoys getting corrected by strangers on the internet or in an online forum. So use methods when you are talking about functions that belongs to an object. Back to our car example. Now, the state of the car object is captured through the attribute of the car. And attribute is a piece of information about the car, like the car's color, the number of seats it has, and the amount of petrol. And the most interesting thing about a car is not its features, but definitely its behavior and what the car actually does and things get done by calling methods and methods are the name for functions that belongs to an object 
So an example of a method on our car object would be something like drive. Now the question is, how do we call one of these functions that is associated with our car? Well, the format is exactly the same with the attributes. We use the dot notation. In other words, we have our object, then dot, and then the name of the method. So for example, if your Rolls Royce car can drive, then we would write Rolls Royce dot drive. And if your car can do other things like talk, then would follow the same pattern. So that's enough theory. Let's put this into practice and add a function to our life.pyl file. In here, we're going to create a function by using the keyword def. And we're going to call this function quotes underscore Einstein. Our function is not going to take any argument. So we would just put empty parentheses and then a colon. And inside the function, we would put a print statement. We're going to print out a single sentence. We're going to have two single quotes. And then we will write the true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. So back to app where we've imported life.py. Here is a challenge. If you can call the quote Einstein method, if you call this method successfully, then you're going to see a quote from our print statement on the console after you run the code. So I will give you a few seconds to pause the video and give this a go. Do they have a goal? So here is a solution. You would write life dot quote underscore Einstein and then run the code. So remember to call the quote Einstein method we first need to use our module object. And in this case, our module has the name life. And we added a dot after life and then write the name of our method. Now, suppose we just try to run quote Einstein on its own without the object. And in that case, you would get an error. Name quote Einstein is not defined. In other words, our Python interpreter doesn't recognize a function called quote Einstein. And this is because quote Einstein belongs to the life.py. It belongs to the module and not our Python app.py file. And this neatly illustrates the difference between a function and a method. To use quote Einstein, we need to have the object and use the dot notation. Now, let's put a couple of past lessons together. You are back as the engineering lead at the calculator company in Silicon Valley, but your company needs to ship its calculator to its first customers as soon as possible. So, it's now time for you and your development team. As a challenge, it's on you to implement the square root functionality of the calculator. Here is what I want you to do. I want you to open that life.pyl file and then import the math module. Then you're going to try to figure out how to use the Python square root functionality from the math module. You're going to create your own function called square underscore root. And that function is going to take one input and return the square root of whatever that function has been given as an argument. After you are done, then you're going to calculate the square root of 225. I will give you a few seconds to pause the video and have a go with this challenge. So you ready? Here is the solution. First, we're going to import math. And then we're going to create a function called def square underscore root. And it's going to take a single input. Let's say x, then column. And then the body of the function, we're going to return the result of the calculation. So the question is, how do we make that calculation? The way we can figure this out is that we're going to search Google for the official Python documentation on the math module. So we're going to write 
Python math module documentation into Google. The documentation looks something like this and it's a pretty long page but let's see if we can find square roots. We can see that the guidance for using the square root in the math module looks like this. We would have to use the math module and then put a dot after it and then write SQRT and provide a single argument. Let's use this functionality. Back to our life.py module. On the same line where we have our return statement, we're going to write math.sqrt and we're going to provide the same inputs or same parameter that we have for our function. So the name of that parameter in our case is x. Now back to app.py, I'm going to say life. Then use the dot notation to access our square root function. Then in between the parentheses, I'm going to pass in 225. So let's store this in a variable called answer. And on this print statement, I'm going to pass the value of answer. And when I run the code, then we're going to see that the square root of 225 has been printed out on the console. So congratulations. Now you pretty much know Python. And in the next couple of lessons, we're going to combine our knowledge and connect the pieces together to build a fun project, which is building a calculator app. This calculator software is going to perform some arithmetic like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division of numbers. For example, 10 divided by 2 is equal to 5. So I hope you are so excited to build this project with me. And on that note, I'll see you in the next lecture. Take care.